Welcome back. All right, another news of the day video for all you fine people for your Wednesday, January the 3rd. I hope your 2024 is going well. Mine so far is, um, at, least there's, at least there's more days left. It's a leap year too. So anyways, uh, tomorrow we will find out the 32 All-Stars, one from each team that the NHL has named, meaning that by this time on Friday, we will be having discussions about who got snubbed and who's going to get snubbed because then you have a fan vote beside the other 12 players and there are definitely going to be players who don't make it to the All-Star game who belong there, especially if you're on a stacked team. Uh, we're now in a league where there are 32 teams. There has to be an All-Star representative from every single team, so it limits how many players you're going to get from any one team. And yeah, some teams are stacked. Uh, just off the top of my head, Tampa Bay, Pittsburgh, you can make arguments for multiple players there. Rangers, Carolina. I'm, I'm just in the Eastern Conference, Vancouver... LA, uh, Winnipeg, absolutely, Colorado. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot. A lot of teams you guys can just, I mean, I think we could have like 100 All-Stars and still have guys who get snubbed. But keep in mind that for the players that don't go, it's a nice break. It, it honestly, it's a nice break. Plus, we've seen players not really necessarily wanting to go. I do wonder if the changes to the to the skills competition where there's actual money being handed out, if that might change players' attitudes towards uh, the All-Star festivities. But, uh, yeah, there's still going to be players who are like, you know what, I just, I, I'd like to have that rest. So we'll see how it all turns out. Um, I'm not going to be doing the fan vote. The NHL's made it clear that, uh, you know, when fans decide to have fun with the vote, whether it was the vote for Rory campaign here in Vancouver or it was the John Scott campaign that got him there, and then they tried to make sure he couldn't play, and then he did, and it ended up being a really nice story. And if the NHL had just left it alone, it just would have been a really nice story, but they didn't. Uh, so at any rate, uh, we'll get our All-Stars, and then we can discuss who's being snubbed. But remember, once the game's done, who got snubbed is kind of kind of forgotten about at that point. So anyways, um, on waiver wire news from today, Jacob Magna has been... Uh, picked up on waivers from Seattle by Chicago. Uh, he has yet to appear in a game for the Seattle Kraken this season. So uh, with Magna, you're getting a defenseman. He does have NHL experience. Chicago could definitely use depth on the blue line, so we'll see how much he gets He gets played. But once the careers of, of Jason and Jacob Magna are, are done, they'll be fascinating to look at side by side because um, I, it is easy to mistake in one for the other. Their careers have been... Similar of a sort, and so all the best to Magna in Chicago. Hopefully gets in a bunch of games for the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, so it's been announced that the World Juniors will be hosted by the Twin Cities in Minnesota. So 2026, uh, the World Junior Championship will be held in Minnesota. I think that's great. Uh, they are called the State of Hockey for a reason, and so that's that should be fantastic. I would expect attendance to be really high. Uh, sometimes you have World Juniors, the attendance may not be that high, other than for, you know, your high-profile games. But I think with, with Minnesota hosting it, it should be pretty well attended all the way through. Um, of course, the World Juniors, as I mentioned in the news video this morning, the semifinals are tomorrow. But, yeah, this is this is kind of big news for Minnesota. Should be great. Uh, Jason Zucker has a hearing for boarding on Nick Cousins. We'll come back to this uh, because, obviously, there's a lot of discussion about this. Nick Cousins... Now he's got two fan bases mad at him. I don't know how many fan bases are going to be mad at Nick Cousins. And it was because he hit a vulnerable player. He hit a vulnerable player. Zucker took offense and, and boarded him. And it was a pretty rough boarding uh, penalty on Zucker. He got five in a game for it. And, and now he has a hearing. So he's going to be suspended for at least the next game. I don't think it's going to be a lot more than that because Cousins did stay in the game. And as rough as that hit looked... Could it have been worse? Probably, but I'll, I'll come back to that because there's a lot of discussion in the hockey world right now. I want to talk about a little bit of it at the end of this video. So Zucker has a boarding call. Let me know how many games you think he'll get. They spin the wheel. I'm, I'm going to guess one, maybe two. I don't think it's going to be a long suspension for him. I had to let the cat out. All right. Uh, so yeah, let me know how many games you think Zucker gets. All right, uh, Rangers news. So Heedle's recovery's been slow. Now this broke on December 30th and I'm seeing it now. So, uh, but yeah, his his recovery's been slow and I guess my coverage of this has been slow too. But he's, he's dealing with a concussion. This is always tricky, right? We have seen pretty big stars. I remember when Sidney Crosby, we were concerned that maybe his career wasn't gonna be that long because of concussions back in 2010 and 2011. 
So Heedle's recovery has been very slow, and he has returned to Czechia to kind of reset things and try to get himself going uh, and work up towards a return. But the question among Stranger fans right now is a simple one. Do you just put him on LTIR, put him on the shelf for the rest of the season, use the money that you've saved to go to acquire, acquire somebody? What do you do? This is a decision the Rangers are going to have to make between now and the trade deadline. I would think that uh, they'll want to get some clarity on whether or not Heedle's going to return this season. Once they have full clarity or a good idea like where it's leaning, then you, you decide on the LTIR and what you might do to bring somebody in after that. Uh, Heedle's a good young player, but we have seen good young players get sidelined with concussions and their careers not necessarily be that long. So all the best to Heedle in his recovery. I really hope he becomes the Crosby story where he ends up having a really good career after the suspicion was he may not play that long. But there are examples, of course, the other way with players who've had shortened careers due to concussions. So all the best to him. Uh, so Crosby last night passed Joe Thornton for 12th on the all-time points list. He now has 1,540. Uh, Thornton with 1,539. So Bork's the next one to pass, 1,579 points. Phil Esposito's not much higher than that. So there's the possibility that Crosby will be 10th on the all-time list. I would say early next season. I don't think he scores 50 more points from here. I mean, he can. He's Sidney Crosby. He's absolutely capable. I don't think he does, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, but 12th all-time in points, and if we get into the whole Mount Rushmore of hockey idea, I haven't done a video on that. I may do a video on that, the idea of who would be on my Mount Rushmore. It's tough because that's four, right? Four guys, that's it. So uh, I don't know if Crosby would make it for that four, but he'd be close. Three Stanley Cup rings and all that, and now he's 12th on the all-time list in, in points. So kudos to him for that, that uh, milestone, and there's more yet to come. Uh, Belinskis has been signed to an extension by the Florida Panthers. It's a two-year extension. It's an $850,000 cap hit. It's less of a cap hit than he has this year, but this year's contract's a two-way deal, and the contract he just signed, the extension, a one-way contract at $850,000. So that's guaranteed money. Uh, good on Belinskis. He stepped in. He played well uh, with all the injuries and everything going on with the Florida Panthers over this season. Belinskis stepped in and I think he performed above what was expected of him and now he's been rewarded with an extension so good on him for that and and kudos so I wanted to get into this because I see this a lot I see it here and I'm seeing arguments online just today about it and coming out of well you've got the Zucker incident now you have the Hartman incident as well with Perfetti which was an echo of what happened with Kaprizov the intent to injure and I see that a lot of well clearly this was intent to injure and the reason that to me the argument is is odd is we're we're trying to read what the player's thinking. I've said before I don't think intent to injure should have anything to do with um, the, the 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 side of things from from Department of Player Safety. Now there are there are exceptions. There are out yes there are exceptions, but I think there are times where fans and I I do think sometimes people in the media too will say well this was an attempt to injure. This was seen as an attempt to injure, where we're kind of assuming what the player is thinking. Hockey is a very fast game, and it is a violent game. And it is a game where you have high emotions. And even though players know each other off the ice and get along better now than they did, say, 30 years ago, and for, as far as with other teams, feels like it's more of just everybody kind of, you know, they all get along. Uh, but the reality is that when they're out there, there are moments where, you know, that's the enemy and you do whatever you can. And there are times where guys will throw a hit and it feels like they're doing whatever they can to try to fire up their team and they throw the hit a little bit too hard. They hit the guy on the numbers. They they get fired up in the moment. They're emotional in the moment. And this is why I think the attempt intent to injure thing should go by the wayside. Uh, just from that perspective, because, again, we're reading intent into what players are doing. When what we heard from Hartman that was said to Perfetti seemed odd because on that play, I don't think anybody looked at that and said, well, clearly that's intent to injure when that's exactly what Hartman told Perfetti. And if he hadn't said that to Perfetti, we wouldn't be talking about it. So it, it is it is an interesting angle that we have as, again, with fans, with media, there's that discussion of intent to injure. And I, I don't like it. There are some obvious examples of how there is an intent to injure, but... It is, it is not. I don't think it's that common. 
at the same time, if you go in, go up against the boards and you smash a guy into the boards, is there a chance he's going to get hurt? Yeah. Are you aware of that when you throw the hit? Yep. The guy taking the hit knows that as well? Yep. Again, it's a tough game. Uh, and with hitting down from where it used to be, it does feel like players don't necessarily brace themselves as much as they used to, or as well, they don't necessarily look for that big uh, open ice hit, which I think makes the Truba ones look worse than what they are, because the players that he's hitting usually are not anticipating the hit. They're looking in another direction, they're looking down at the puck, they're looking towards the net, and they don't understand they've got a, a freight train coming at them. Uh, and, and what he throws is, is legal by the NHL sense, but because he's hitting players that aren't necessarily ready, we feel like he's a big meanie pants. I'm not saying he doesn't ride that line. He does, but there, there are times where it feels like, uh, people read into hits. It happens. Um, I've been wanting to do a video on head contact and just, can you get head contact out of the game? Reason I haven't done the video is because I don't think you can. I don't think there's a way to get head contact out of the game without threatening to just take body checking out of the game because you're going to at times hit a player in the head it's just going to happen you you change your your angle when you go in for the hit or they change their angle while you're hitting them it can end up being head contact even when it's not intended and so yeah it's a whole debate we can have as well at some point i just haven't figured out an exact way to put that video together on a whiteboard and present it to all you fine people on the internet but when i do you guys will be the first ones to know so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video or because you feel like it. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I know not everybody's going to agree with me on that. That's okay too. Uh, again, you're going to have a good debate. There has to be two sides of that debate. And so I think it's a debate that's worthy of being had. And I would hope at some point the NHL cleans up the rules a little bit. There's too much gray area. Uh, there's too much gray area with some, and I'm not I'm not talking about goalie interference. No, nope, not talking about goalie interference here, because that's not a play that can injure players. But there are there are definitely plays that injure players that I think there's some gray area in the rules where open to interpretation. And again, uh, what would that look like? Maybe I'll do a video on that soon. But let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for all your support. As always, I will talk to you again soon.